What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Asmi Hangas. We're going to be reviewing the Canon QL17 today. The QL stands for quick load and what we call in the photo community, the poor man's Leica. I've been eyeballing a rangefinder for quite a long time and the best rangefinder out on the market is a Leica. Unfortunately, I don't have $20,000 to just, you know, throw away on a camera, but I found a great alternative and hopefully it will be an alternative that you consider as well. Let's look at the outer interior of the design, which I really enjoy. It's a nice silver and black color. If you're a Raider fan, you're definitely gonna like this camera. In addition to that, the bulk of this camera is just intense. I guess cameras back when they were previously being built are very generous with the weight, but it's the same weight as the Nikon F2 that I reviewed previously. But where you run into a problem with this heavy weight is the grip. The camera doesn't have a grip for your hands. So once you get sweaty, the material that they chose, you kind of have a hard time grasping it. So I suggest that you get a strap with this camera. As you can see, the holes on this are relatively small, which means that you have a smaller pool of choices. So you're probably just gonna go with a Peak Design strap. Height and width wise, the height is 85% of an iPhone XR and the width is probably three iPhones stacked together. You're not gonna be able to fit this camera in your pocket though because it does not have a removable lens. The top of the camera also follows a very minimalistic setup, which is your film release, your hot shoe mount, which means that you can take this into the studio, the number of film stocks you've gone through, and your shutter release button. What's really interesting about the camera though is on the inside where there is a small window which automatically latches to the film. You will find this window on any QL product that Canon has made. The window did come in handy and as advertised, I did notice a difference when I was loading this camera as compared to the previous ones that I've done in the past. Moving down to the bottom, there's really nothing special going on there except a thread and a release to pop up in the back. This Canon, the QL17 strides a 40 millimeter F 1.7 lens and I was really astonished by this, but there's clearly a trade-off which is it's not removable. So what you get is what you get. Depending on who you are though, you might see this as a challenge or a disadvantage. For me throughout my review, I was just thinking, wow, one less thing to carry. There's no need to switch between any particular gear. What I got is what I got. So I just took on the challenge and 40 millimeters doesn't feel any different than 35. Adding on to that, what you'll find notable about this camera is the type of battery that it takes it requires a mercury battery. Now, if you're a certain age, you'll know what mercury is because it was around us all the time. That battery powers the light meter. However, they are impossible to find. I'm pretty sure they're illegal. You gotta Google that yourself, but they're very difficult to find and the alternatives are very expensive. So for me, I personally just use an app which is cheaper and way safer to use. So that's the one downside of this camera. But don't let that discourage you because the camera is fully mechanical, which is nice. Moving forward, we had to still continue talking about the lens because it's just really interesting what they were trying to do in the past, trying to cram everything into a more compact camera. And I think about the Fujifilm camera that I reviewed a while back and how that camera also tried to, you know, mush all the settings onto the lens. Canon also tried to do that. However, what the Fujifilm had in its advantage was its size. There's just so much more breathing room in that camera to grasp everything, and it just feels more natural, right? The Canon, though, does not have that advantage. It's not all the rings, it's just one of them. The shutter speed ring is very easy to grasp because it's on the front, and the focus lever is really smooth. Where the biggest problem happens, though, is in the aperture ring. It's right in the middle, which means that when I'm trying to move around the aperture, I'm also moving my focus. And I could also potentially move my shutter speed. So there's a lot of recalibrating that I had to do. In the front, there's also a timer. So if there's sufficient light, you're able to take a group photo. It'll rewind and make this very classic, you know, jack in the box sound you also have a few conditional settings on the bottom right here. Trekking along, you know the saying, silence is golden? Well, the silence on this 
is 24 karat gold. When I first heard the shutter go off, it I, like, was this going off? It's like a Prius, right? You know, when a Prius is just waiting at the light and it just like, it like cuts off and you're wondering, is this car even on? I mean, you just look, hear this? It, it doesn't even sound like anything. If you're a street photographer, man, I would recommend this camera in a heartbeat. Finally, the rangefinder. And you know, to me, like Leicas have always been this sort of extremely difficult piece of gear to get. You know, you have to be some sort of doctor or lawyer with an immense amount of disposable income to just own the thing, own like the body, not even the lens, right? And I'm just like, what is an extra 15 to 25% of a preview gonna do for me, right? But as I was photographing the camera, that 15 to 25% preview just kind of changes the way that I'm gonna photograph anything, right? When someone was coming into the frame as I was doing a bit of street photography, do I want the person in the frame to give it more depth or do I not want them in the frame as much so that there's you know a sense of emptiness? Do I let the light come in just a little bit more so that the person looks like they're glowing a bit more, right? Do I wait for the car to pass by? You know, there's a there's a bird coming into the frame. Do I want the bird? Do I not want the bird? It lets you go a little bit wider too, especially when you're on a 40 millimeter. I don't know how true this would be for other focal lanes, but it's very, very useful. And I'm, I'm just like astonished. Like why don't more camera companies do this, right? It just seems so basic and simple. I actually did not look for the physics of this. I really love a rangefinder, the way that it just changes everything that I shoot, right? In a better way and it improves it. And it makes me think and wait just a little bit more before I press that shutter, right? So it's also about saving yourself a bit of film. With the rangefinder though, especially this QL17, just know that you're gonna be limited to one 500th of a second, which is kind of a downfall for me too. So this is a great little inexpensive introduction into the world of rangefinders. And I'm just completely in love with them. And I hope to get a really nice Leica one day. My overall thoughts for this camera is this is a great introduction into the rangefinder series and a overall competent camera to bring around with you. However, the biggest downfall is just that middle wheel, right? Although you get that preview and it's nice to get that extra 25% before you shoot your shot, you might accidentally miss up because everything is too jammed in. So that might be a hesitation for you. I know that would be a hesitation for me if I was you know, looking at this review. And one 500th of a second, I don't know how people did it, but to me, that's just a limitation too. Uh, I always kind of need one 4,000th of a second, but it is a nice challenge. And I think that the demographic that would really gravitate towards this camera are just street photographers because it just completely changes the dynamic of your frame. You don't need to spend $20,000 on a camera. This camera is very inexpensive. It's still out there and it's by a well-known brand. Let me know what you think though. Do you already own a rangefinder? Or <laughs> I especially wanna know if you have a Leica because now I can see why so many people want to gravitate towards it. I think I've gotten a good amount of experience with rangefinders now. And one day I hope to own a real Leica system without costing me an arm and a leg. But let me know what you think. Is this a camera that you're looking at getting? Because there's definitely a lot of great and subtle features that they included into this. But let me know your thoughts down below. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and the Foundation app. Upload me on there as I'm trying to sell some NFTs. At the end of the day, thank you so much for your time and your attention. My name is Azmi Hongos, and I'll catch you in the next one.